going out on a limb here, I think you may just possibly be familiar with bookmarking. Find a website you like, bookmark it, yeah. Maybe you, being you, get a bit fancy and you pin the sites that you most often use. Uh, that's in Safari, but you know, all browsers do something like it. Or perhaps you're organized and you create whole folders of website bookmarks and can get to them with a couple of clicks or a swipe or something. Or maybe you just, you know, you're bored, you have a bit of time on your hands and something like Keyboard Maestro, and you set it up so that with one button, you can make Safari open all of the sites you've bookmarked for a particular task. Open all the ones you need in a single go. But Everything you've just done there, every bookmark is for a website, and you're a writer. You, you are working with some websites, and you are distracting yourself with others, uh, but you're also dealing all the time with documents, uh, files, notes, documents, uh, different writing apps, folders full of details, emails, to-do tasks, all this stuff. What if I told you that you can now bookmark any or all of those. Go immediately from writing in Word or Pages to the original email from your editor, uh, to your notes, back to Pages, onto the folder where you're collating all of this. You're not looking convinced. I've got to say, let me show you the way. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me who use Macs and iPhones and iPads. Uh, do subscribe because A, we have so much to talk about, and two, every minute you and I talk is another minute where we have an excuse to not write. Not that I can stretch this one out very much, I'm afraid. I want to show you a Mac-only utility app called Hook and showing it to you it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, if you don't already know it, and it was new uh, new to me until very recently, then I think you, you'll see it, but it'll take you longer to master. I found it oddly confusing at first, and, and there are a couple of bugs. But this is one of those apps you buy uh, for a particular job and then find that it spreads to everything. If you get hooked, well, you, if you get hooked, you're going to get hooked. Yeah, here's an example of what I can do with it when editing uh, this, this magazine, Sparking Writers. It's a magazine published by Writing West Midlands, where here I am in the UK. Um, I'm often the editor and I also produce uh, this PDF version and, and an online edition. Let me say thanks, by the way, to Emma Bonniewell at Writing West Midlands. I asked her for permission to you know, show you the innards of it, the inner workings of her publication. And well, as you can guess, there are plenty of inners to discuss, but uh, for me to make this magazine for Emma, uh, clearly I have to do some writing. I mean, not much actually in this case, but there's some that's got to be done. Uh, it's a magazine of writing by young writers. So there's collating submissions, 60 odd or more, I don't know. Uh, there's juggling all of those authors. There's accepting pieces. There is rejecting pieces, lots of correspondence. Um, there's also then editing pieces I've accepted. And then, uh, yeah, all the business of compiling the PDF, you get this, the, idea, the list goes on like any writing project. But watch this. Here's my Mac with nothing much open. Uh, most things I do start with OmniFocus, the to-do app, so let's show you that first. And this is my issue 22 project in OmniFocus. So, okay, I've started, I want to get going. I need to just check a detail in the email I've been sent about it, the original email from the editor. Press Hook's keyboard shortcut, Shift, Command, Space, and here we go, select the email. Oh, let me just open the folder that I've made for this issue. Yeah, mm. I also need to make a quick note about all of this in Apple Notes. And uh, just for now, let's pretend I'm, I'm further through this. I'm, I'm deep into designing the PDF magazine in Affinity Publisher. Oh, I think that looked good to you. I also think I might have looked quite good to you. I might, at least I might have looked organised. Yeah, but you know what writing's really like. You're writing and editing. It's... It's never that you start at the top of the to-do list. Just, da, 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 work. The writing job requires you to jump back and forth, to look up this thing, to edit that, to save the other. Everything you've just seen helps me when I start up a project, but it helps me even more when I'm deep into it. So I'm a couple of weeks in, I'm in Affinity Publisher, and suddenly I'm not sure 
I have something I've been asked to apply to something. Skip from publisher to the specific email I want. Notice, by the way, mail wasn't running then. When Hook opened mail, then went to the specific email. I know we're talking about Hook, but that's how fast mail opens on an M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Uh, anyway, now I'm in mail, I'm reading this. I realise I don't understand something, and I'll need to ask Emma, who won't believe me when I tell you this, but I do try to bundle up questions into, into groups rather than just lob them at her as they occur to me. Honestly, I, I do. And what I do is I tend to collect them up in a note. So here I am in that email message, command shift space, and I'm in my Apple notes with the note for this issue. That's the sort of thing, over and over. Um, just as we are used to skipping between different apps, different folders, different documents, well, we just, we carry on doing that. We just never have to search for any of it again. I don't have to drill down to the Sparking Writers Magazine folder. I just go straight to it. I don't have to open mail and search for that. I just go straight to it. Or rather, I don't have to search for it. I don't have to drill down again a second time. Instead, when I first start up a project, I kind of grab all these things together with hook, and thereafter, that's when they are all a keystroke or two away. There are different ways to link documents and so on in Hook. You can drag files and folders to the Hook menu bar, for instance, and I never do it. I don't do it because it's actually a bit inconsistent. Not all apps play nice. It does always work with files and folders, and I can, for instance, drag an OmniFocus project into it, but I can't drag that note from Apple Notes, and who knows why. Plus, I just I like typing. I stick to the keyboard, mostly. Um, as I first began this magazine project, um, well, I started by making the OmniFocus task list, and I, then I made the note and so on. Then I could have just hooked them together as I went through, as I came to use each one. But instead, I went around, rattled around all of them and hooked them up in one go. And here's how I set that up. Starting, for no particular reason, in Apple Notes. Open the note, press Command Shift Space, choose Copy Link. There are keystrokes for all of this, and it's taken me a time to learn them, but you'll see Hook shows them all, all the time. For some reason, it took me a while to get these ones into my head. Much better when you do, but it took me a time. Uh, anyway, uh, made the first link for Apple Notes. Now let's move to OmniFocus and this magazine project. Uh, small difference. Hook here to copied link instead of just copy link. So to what we've done is we've made the note be the first thing we copied. We're now adding to that. Same with the folder, once I've navigated to it. Now open Affinity Publisher with the right document, hook it. And lastly for this set, the email. Open mail, find the message, select the message, hook. I said this would be quick, and, and I think I've raced through it. A bit. I mean, I know you get it, I know you understand the concept, and, and you can also tell whether you think hook's going to be any use to you or not. I don't know that you can go from watching this to just using Hook instantly. And the reason I don't know is that it could just be me. It took me a time to understand Hook enough to show you. Now, doubtless, it's on that. It, it is me. Your mileage is, surely it will vary. And anyway, once I'd used it a few times, maybe a lot, it, it became more obvious. But there are two issues to watch out for. Um, the first is to do with, how, you know how Macs are more secure than PCs, uh, and as part of that, any app you download, it cannot just do whatever it likes. It needs your explicit permission to access your files and folders. Or if it's something like Hook that works with all your different uh, apps, it needs explicit permission from you to do that for each app. That's all good. That's all fine. What is supposed to happen, and usually does, is that the first time you're in some app and you call up hooks, command, shift, spacebar, keystroke, then the Mac will, oh, uh, uh, do you want this? Do you want hook to hook this up or, or, or not? Cannot knock that. It's a good Mac security thing. And hook, actually, the developers, they wrote a perfect explanatory sign for why the app needs you to say yes. But when you get that dialog box, read fast. Because I paused for a second to take a screenshot to show you the message, and apparently I took too long about it. Find a timed out error. Except it didn't. 
that error is telling you that you took too long, that it didn't work. But assuming you, you clicked to give permission, well then actually it worked fine. You don't have to redo giving permission. Yeah, you, you can't. It just works now. So that's a bit naff. But you do find out that one very quickly. You, you, you find it because you, you try doing it again, believing it hasn't worked. And, and then it's, it does. No messages, just works. Uh, similarly, but much more frustrating because it's so hard to fathom out what's wrong, is this. Same situation. Uh, you're in an app you haven't used with hook before. You use the hook keyboard shortcut and it does not show you that Mac message, that Mac security message. Instead, it just bleeps at you. No message, no clue what's gone wrong, just a bleep to tell you that something's off. The way to fix this and to be able to then use hooking the app, and by the way, there is no clue about this. I just kept trying things till it worked. To fix this, to make it work, you have to reopen hook, relaunch it, and then go back to the app you want to work in and you do the same thing. And now the shortcut brings up that request for permission as it should. So uh, the erroneous timeout message, that's a bit naff. The bleeping wrong bleep is annoying. And I suppose they're both fine when you know. I that could be a summary of Hook. No, actually, it's not really fair. Let me go further. Hook isn't just fine when you know your way around a couple of things. It is brilliant when you know how to use it. It has just taken me, I'm surprised to say this, keep saying it to you, but it's taken me time to learn to use it. And it was worth it, but it took time. Um, I did, I struggled, for example, getting to add a Safari web page. And I don't know what was making me struggle, since now it seems to be working fine, I think. Um, actually, no, now it's brilliant, usually. Go take a look at Hook on its official site, hookproductivity.com. Um, Hook comes with a 30-day trial, and I needed that. After the 30 days, uh, it becomes a free light version, which is of no particular use to anyone. There is an essentials version then for $20, which is what I've gone for, and there's a pro version for $34. And I was tempted by that, because it does give you more features, but they seem to be all to do with how you can use the links that you copy from Hook, the links to the apps and things, and create markdown documents that list all the links in them. I never use markdown, so. Whichever you buy, that is it. It is a one-time purchase, it is not a subscription, except the developer just kind of make it sound as if it is. Um, as I say, buy it and you're done. And then also actually for the next year, if a new update comes out, you get it for free. After that year though, you won't get any new updates without paying an extra update fee. And that bit is like a subscription, it's like an annual update subscription fee, if an optional one. Um, just for completeness, if you buy the Essentials version now, then after a year, it costs $9 to get another year's worth of updates. If you bought Pro, it's a $12 fee for the year. I don't know yet. I haven't had it for a year. I can't tell if it's worth that annual upgrade. Because the features and functions you get when you buy right now are very good. If the company releases some significant updates during the next year, or maybe actually in the future, if a new version of Mac OS breaks hook, which is always possible, then yeah, that's when I would buy update. I would like to be un unequivocally enthusiastic about Hook and I can't quite because it does it does still confuse me at times. It will have Hook to link to something that I wasn't intending and I know that's me but I don't know yet how it's me. But look even showing you the one example that one example of Spark Young Writers magazine, the project for that, the speed of moving between the apps and the folders and the emails, it is tremendous. And more than the uh, measurable speed, more than more than you could check out with a stopwatch app, that's the way it feels faster. Because I'm not stopping to think, let's go to mail, find the email, read this. I'm just thinking, I need this information. There it is. Uh, I need it. I'm there. And I'm back again. That is why Hook is worth getting and worth practicing with. That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself, eh? And I'll see you soon.